little piece of land on the east coast of Australia is where I call home. Nestled amongst the trees is my little caravan I renovated back in 2017 and where I've lived ever since. After dedicating years working jobs that made me pretty unhappy, I decided to start my own photography business, turning a hobby into a steady stream of income. Downsizing reduced my financial obligations, making things easier for me to work entirely for myself. Since downsizing and working for myself, I've discovered how rewarding living a slow lifestyle really is. My style of business allows me to schedule work when it suits me, giving me the freedom to make more room each day to take care of myself. Not waking up to an alarm, but instead once my body is well slept. Drinking a morning coffee and watching the dog sniff around the yard while my mind wakes up and plans for the day ahead. Don't get me wrong though, I'm only human and I can easily find myself slipping back into old patterns of overworking myself. So these videos I'm creating each week remind me of what I believe in and how I'd rather be spending my days. This week I managed to squeeze in a bit of work around the caravan, building a chicken coop and continuing to remove the paint from the van in order to give the exterior a makeover. Quite a few months ago you guys saw in one of my videos which I'll link somewhere up here you saw me clearing a space on the land which is kind of beside another chicken coop and I plan to get my own chickens and also create like a veggie garden there since then I don't know I've had a couple of challenges I I bought some seedlings planted those which you guys also saw in one of my recent videos and after planting them within a couple of days a mouse came along and ate all those seedlings so that was ruined and then I ended up like setting up some mouse, some mice traps in the house. And um, I used the ones where you actually catch the mouse, that it doesn't kill them. And then you just like take them far away and release them. I don't know, I think mice are really cute and I feel kind of bad killing them. So <laughs> I like to use the humane traps. And so we did that. And then after a little while, once the traps like weren't catching mice again, I replanted those seedlings, hoping that the mice had left me alone and they hadn't, they came back and ate them again. And by that point, I'd actually run out of seedlings and it was just another job on my to-do list where I would have had to like order more seedlings or go and buy some and then start the whole process again. I don't actually own the land that I live on and I'm currently renting. So I'm pretty privileged to be offered like a, a space on the property here to be able to grow my own food and also have my own chickens. But I have decided that I'm gonna just start with getting chickens and Hopefully they lay for me and I can collect eggs as often as possible because I do eat eggs for breakfast every single day. So being able to kind of have that as a little hobby and collect my own eggs would be really nice. So I'm gonna start with that. However, my friend who I'm getting the chickens off, they are only like hatching now. And so we've got to wait probably like eight weeks or so before the chickens will be ready. So they're actually still quite a while away. So we probably won't actually see them until I don't know, maybe the end of this year, start of next year. That little space over there that the camera was just focusing on, that's where I was weeding a couple of months ago in one of those previous videos that I made. And that's where I plan to have a veggie garden and also have like the chicken coop in there as well. And you know, I might still do that. It's just not on my priority list at the moment. Um, I spent like probably six hours weeding that space and then I kind of got busy with work it rained a lot and it's all grown back so if I decide to go back in there I pretty much just have to spend another whole day weeding that place to kind of prepare it to do what I want with it. I think that was a pretty obvious sign that I don't have any time to maintain or manage a veggie garden at this point but it is something I still might do in the future but as I said I think for now I'm just gonna like try and shop locally at farmers markets instead.
is this going to be in focus, please? This is like the seventh time I've filmed this because I keep filming it and the camera just doesn't focus on my face. So hopefully this time around it's focusing on my face. It has been six months since I worked on the exterior of the caravan. And if you guys are wondering what I'm actually doing with the exterior, I'm removing the old original paint and planning to give it a fresh paint job. So when I repaint it, I plan to paint it white. I think that's probably the best option because if I gave it any color, you know, colors come in and out of style pretty quickly. So I think that if I'm white with the black windows, it'll be, I don't know, I feel like that style won't kind of go out of fashion. Anyway, the reason I'm actually removing the paint is because the previous owner painted over the original paint with house paint. They didn't actually use the correct paint for automotive. Uh, and so the paint actually just started to peel and looked really horrible. So that's why I'm removing the paint. So originally, um, at the beginning of this year, you might see in some of my early videos, I was removing the paint from the exterior of the caravan using a drill and a wire brush and also a sander. And although those methods worked really well, they were extremely labor intensive. I ended up giving myself tendonitis in my right arm after spending like 10 to 12 hours one day working on the outside of the van. So I wasn't able to continue working on it myself and I really struggled to find anyone that was able to help me. Even like paying someone, people had a really high hourly rate because it is such a <laughs> boring job to do. No one really wanted to do it. And so I kind of gave up on it for a little while did a bit of research to find like another method to remove the paint and I found something called vapor blasting. I had a company come out and attempt to remove the paint via vapor blasting, but he very quickly discovered that the pressure in the gurney of the vapor blaster was a little too strong for my three mil aluminium cladding on the exterior and it was actually dinting the caravan. So he stopped doing that immediately and just said like, look, I don't really want to continue because I'm doing more damage than good and he didn't want to be held liable. So I really admired his honesty and he left. I kind of felt really disheartened because I was excited that that method was going to work and that at the end of that day, I would have been potentially ready to just paint the van, but that wasn't the case. So I kind of gave up on the whole exterior for a while just because it was giving me a lot of stress and I felt confused about like what direction to take next because I couldn't do the work because of my arm and I couldn't find anyone to do the work. Eventually, another friend of mine said, why don't you use paint stripper? And originally I was like, a little bit kind of turned off by using paint stripper. I heard it's quite like a dangerous um, chemical to, to work with and I felt a bit frightened about that. Plus I heard that it was a really messy job and you kind of had to apply it, put like a tarp or something, like apply plastic onto the surface, wait for a period of time and then, you know, move on. And I thought, you know, that just sounds like a nightmare to do it that way, I'd rather just like sand it off or something. And yeah, I was, I was just being a little bit stupid and naive, I suppose, and um, didn't realize how friggin' easy this method actually is. So my friend ended up coming over with some paint stripper. He said, look, there's a type that you can use that you only have to wait two to 15 minutes and then you can just scrape it off. So he came over, demonstrated that for me and made me realize how stupid I've been all year. Just doing a quick snake check. I heard something behind me. Um, yeah, I realized how stupid I've been for not just using paint stripper in the first place because it leaves quite a nice polished surface on the van and it's just so easy. It is messy, like as you can see here, I've already started using the paint stripper and it kind of just makes all the paint really flaky and you scrape it off and you try and catch it all, but unfortunately some does go on the ground, so then you've got to clean that up. But this is the best method so if anyone else out there is watching this and you have a vintage caravan and you want to repaint the outside i recommend using paint stripper to remove all the old paint giving it a good sand applying a primer and then putting on like a really good automotive paint on the outside just to do the job properly because i think there's a lot of people out there potentially not using the right paint just like the previous owners, I'm yet to really discover what the exact paint is that I need, but I'm pretty sure it's like a galvanized automotive paint of some kind. Uh, I don't know much about paint, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, once I've removed all the paint, I plan to use like the proper stuff for the caravan so that I won't ever ha hopefully have to do this again. And that if I do want to sell the van one day, you know, I can guarantee to the next owners that 
I've repainted it properly and they'll be able to watch these videos to see exactly how I actually repainted the van. So yeah, today I am going to be working with the paint stripper, removing more paint off the van. On one side of the van here, I've done like the bottom half. So I'm still yet to do the top half. Parts of the van have been done with the wire brush and the drill, so, and also the vapor blasting. So there are like other bits that are already done. So yeah, it's pretty much like the side walls today. And then on a separate day, once I get like some better scaffolding and some planks to run across the top of the roof, I'll jump up on the roof and start to tackle that because that's going to be a big job and potentially a job where I'm going to get very sunburned. So this is the paint stripper that I'm using. Poly paint stripper, original formula, fast acting, deep penetrating. So basically this stuff, application, apply a thick coating, two to three millimeters, using a paintbrush. Allow the paint to soften and blister, approximately two to 15 minutes. Work on a small section at a time to prevent paint rehardening. All right, it's two days later, so I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update on what I've been up to here. A lot more paint stripping on this side of the van. So pretty much all sides of the van have been paint stripped now. I've just got the roof left to do, but that's gonna be a big job where I need some scaffolding to actually get up there. And that'll probably take me a full day. So I've kind of uh, skipped ahead and started sanding the caravan. So that's what I'm doing today just sanding off because um, the paint stripper worked quite well but in some areas it didn't work as well so for example here along the van obviously the original design had like this big orange strip that ran up the whole side of the van and where that orange paint is the paint kind of um, didn't strip off like the top coat of paint didn't strip off as well and I believe there's an undercoat as well which is see how it's like silver and then there's white that white colour paint actually isn't coming off either, so I think that might be the original primer. And apparently it's actually okay to keep that original primer on there and kind of just sand off the top coats, because, I don't know, my painter friend just said, like, that's okay to sort of keep on there. So I'm just going to listen to him, and plus that means there's less work to do anyway. 
So another issue was, let's see if the camera's gonna pick it up. So another issue was here where the vapor blasting was done. It left like a really coarse texture on the metal. And I was worried that, you know, once I finished removing all the paint and then put a new paint coat on, that there was kind of gonna be like a difference in texture on the van where the vapor blasting had been done. But we worked out that we're actually able to um, just simply sand that section carefully because obviously the cladding is really thin but sand that section over and it kind of smooths out. I'm not sure whether the camera is really going to show it up here but it kind of smoothed out. Come on camera, focus for me. I have to use manual focus. So yeah, it kind of smoothed out that section there. I've only done a little bit of it. I'm yet to do the rest down here. I also started removing the paint from the roof here. So that paint on the roof is actually a different type of paint to the rest of the van. That I actually did myself like two to three years ago with a ceramic paint called Thermo Shield. And that paint is designed to actually reflect UV from the roof and reduce the heat inside the van by about 5%. I'm not really sure whether it actually worked or not because it isn't really designed for RVs, more so like big commercial buildings. But I did put that on there and I'm now removing it because it just kind of left a really terrible texture and being under the trees, obviously like when it would rain, they would stain the roof and more so on the ceramic paint because it didn't have like a gloss surface. So I should have actually put like some kind of gloss paint or something over the top of it to make it not as coarse to hold stains. But yeah, I sort of discovered as well under here, the original, if I can get the focus right, the original, um, design so it said Viscount C Royale so that means that I now know what this model of the caravan was. So the step after I have finished sanding the caravan is actually going around and putting new rivets in a couple of holes where rivets have fallen out and at the moment water can obviously get in there which is quite bad so I'm going to go around a, a few of them are also loose so I'll be fixing those and I'll be getting the drill with the wire brush going around the entire caravan, all of the doors, windows, and also the trim. Like I've actually already done this part earlier in the year, so that's already done, but like along here and removing the old sealant and then replacing it with new sealant so that the whole van will be watertight. I've kind of thought about replacing the exterior panels on the caravan. Obviously that was my first thought, but after doing a couple of inquiries <laughs> for how much it's going to cost, a lot of companies like panel beaters and stuff were saying that it's going to cost between seven and $25,000, like $7,000 to $25,000 per side. And that is because most people who are claiming to redo the exterior paneling are actually um, redoing it because they've put in an insurance claim. So their insurance companies are paying for it which means that the people who are doing the work can increase the pricing. So yeah, that's why I haven't actually just replaced the exterior panelling. That in itself would have been a major job as well. I would have had to not live in the van for a little while. They also have to like remove the windows and everything. So yeah, that's, I think that this is a much easier job. I also kind of think that, you know, a couple of dints here and there and a couple of like, you know, strange rivets and things that are on the van kind of tell a story and and keep it's like vintage kind of aesthetic so I think like once I've you know done my best to you know bring it to the best it can be and then give it a really nice coat of paint I think that it'll look pretty cool I kind of don't mind the dints here and there at first I was really worried about them and I thought oh I really don't want dints on the caravan but I don't know, after a while, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, that tells a story. It shows its age and its character. So yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna keep sanding. Hopefully I can get this whole side done today. That is my goal. And then what's next? I might actually jump ahead to the rivets and put those in if I can. I've got like quite a few rivets from when I put the interior walls in inside in my toolbox up in the shed so I'll just hopefully get those and they'll fit um, otherwise I'm not sure what I'll do I might have to do some YouTubing to find out how to 
plug old rivet holes. 